Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So today's video is going to be about Scarred and Broken Heroes. Before we get started, Mandy, do you want to tell them what we're doing for our Road to 1K giveaway now? Yes. So when we get to 500, we're giving away this bag full of swag, including... Twisted Love by Anna Huang. Yes. So you do not want to miss out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram as well for a bonus entry. And when we get to 500, we'll be giving that away on our way to 1K. Yes. What is it? What is that noise? Do you have a fan going? Chase computer is giving up on life. <laughs> Fantastic. That's, That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So, uh, also, I think that since we're talking about Scarred and Broken Heroes, we just set this down. Uh, maybe we need to go over this, like, just because we're titling them as Scarred and Broken Heroes does not mean they're actually broken. The heroes themselves think they are. They think they are. The women that they get into relationships with often don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Or they want to help them overcome whatever is making them feel that way. Yeah. So it just adds to the story. Yeah. We don't think if anybody has any of these things we don't think anybody's scarred or broken we think everybody's perfect the way they are so um, our focus is primarily on heroes who feel that they are inadequate or not good enough for whatever reason so they yeah. feel that they're broken or damaged i do have to give a shout out to uh neva altai's perfectly imperfect series this is kind of what inspired this video uh, this is what gave us the idea so this is the first book in her series all of the men this is the mafia series it's amazing but all the men in this series have something that make them imperfect like one has uh is an amputee one was in a wheelchair you know like they're they all have something and so um that i read all of these in the month of may loved them and so we were like let's do let's find some more heroes like that so that's what we've got here all right. So, Jessica, do you want to go first? I can definitely go first. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, I am. I am. All right. I, I lost my notes there for a second, but I'm good. All right. So, my first book is a historical romance. It's a Western historical romance. It is Texas Destiny by Lorraine Heath. This is a Western historical romance. This is about Amelia and Houston. So Houston was in the Civil War when he was young. He was really young. And something happened um, during one of the battles and the side of his face is scarred. And he wears an eye patch because he lost his eye in the battle. Um, so this is a mail order bride situation. Amelia has been writing to Houston's brother, Dallas, and has agreed to marry him. So she travels from back east to the west to Texas, um, obviously Texas. And she's going to marry... Dallas. Well, Dallas has taken a fall at the farm and he's hurt himself and he's like, he hurt his leg or he broke his leg or something. And he cannot go to fetch her from the train station. And so he sends his brother Houston to go and Houston and Amelia go on this trek from the um, train station to the house. It takes them, I want to say it was like a month. It was a three week trek to the ranch. And along the way, uh, Houston starts looking good to Amelia, but she's promised to his brother. And so if this is their story. I loved this story. It was obviously five stars for me, um, but it was, it was really good. It, it just, it was, it was good. It was really good. Was it so, so good? <laughs> it was so, so good. Yes. As someone who doesn't read a lot of historicals, it was good. I loved it. I feel like you say that every time you read a historical. <laughs> I do because I'm very picky about my historicals. So the ones I read tend to be good. I guess there's some over that aren't that great. It's okay. So. All right. Go away now. So my first one is Blue from No Tomorrow by Carrie Ann Cole. I this is a long book, so you're in for a long ride if you read this book, but it is so, so good. <laughs> really worth it. Um, so this is about Blue and Piper. When I read, <clears throat> excuse me, when I read the back, I I was thinking I was getting a very different book. The book I got was so much better. That being said, there are things that happen in this book that 
tell you why he's kind of broken and damaged that I can't actually discuss without giving like huge chunks of the book away. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to give you a quick little synopsis as best I can when talking about Carrie Ann Cole for you. So Piper meets Blue. He is a homeless musician in the park. She is captivated by his playing. She goes and listens to him play the guitar and sing in the park all the time. And she happens upon him where he's living under the bridge. And she's just instantly drawn to him. And she ends up losing her virginity to him under the bridge. And that is what starts off their relationship. It is a really long, painful, rocky ride. But it is fantastic writing. Blue is a very complex hero in the story who definitely feels he's not worthy of Piper through most of the book, which makes it even more painful and sad, but it's so, so good. So do yourself a favor and read this book. I don't think you'll be disappointed. No, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> Mandy knows that for sure. Yes. So if you haven't read it, go read it. It was a really popular book there for a while, but it's good. It's worth it. It's worth the hype. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. So my next read is um, Falling from the Sky by Sierra Bowen. This is number two in her Gravity's of Gravity series. Is what they, what's called the Gravity series. Uh, but you can read it as a standalone. I did. I have not read the first book. So this one is about Callie and Hank. Hank, when the book first starts, Hank is a snowboarder. He is an Olympic snowboarder. Um, they know he goes by the name Hazardous. And he is, you know, well known in the world for being this great, amazing snowboarder. And he's at the Olympic, like the pre-trials or, or something. It's a, it's a show before they go off to the Olympics. And Callie is a doctor. And so when the first book first starts out, Something happens. Callie is there. She's watching it. But there's an accident that occurs. And he breaks his back. And so Hank now is a paraplegic. And he is in a wheelchair. And so he remembers seeing Callie at the hospital. But he doesn't remember a lot. And then we fast forward nine months later. And Hank is back at the hospital. Because he's not handling the situation of, of not being able to walk very well. Mentally, he is having a very hard time. And he... Um, gets a little too drunk one night and has to have a stomach, stomach pumped. And um, yeah, Callie, I keep wanting to say Hallie, it's Callie. Callie is there. And he remembers her from when he was first in his accident. And then he decides that he needs to see more of her. So he works it, he finagles it in a way that a new program is brought to the hospital where it is for people with spinal cord injuries. And she has been put like in charge of this so that he can see her all the time. And he has enough backing from his family. They're very wealthy. It's a small town in Colorado. And so they're able to bring this in. They're very influential. And so this is his story about him and her and how he tries to woo her. And she's like, well, I'm your doctor. And he's like, oh, I don't really care. There's a lot of talk in this book about um, how to get the little snowboarder to stand up and work. Um, that They go over that quite a bit in this book. And so um, I love this one. This, again, was obviously it was a five-star if we're recommending it, but it was great. I loved the dynamic between the couple. And I love that, you know, they really talked about what it's like to be paralyzed from the waist down and what it feels like for him. So, yeah. Okay. On that note. On that note. <sighs> so my next book is The Air He Breathes by Brittany C. Cherry. This is about Tristan and Elizabeth. And this book, I'll just be honest, it's it's a little depressing, <laughs> but it's beautifully written. It's so beautifully written. Tristan is just a grump and Elizabeth is moving in next door to him with her little girl and her husband has died a couple years ago and she just hasn't really been able to move on yet. And so she decides like, I have got to get on with my life. I've got to do better. Like she's been living with her mom, sleeping on her mom's couch. And so her and her daughter move into this house and Tristan is their neighbor. And he is just, he's awful. He's like a grump and he's rude to her. And we find out as the book goes on that he is dealing with a ton of pain. And so his behavior is because of how broken and damaged he feels. 
but he starts to do like little thoughtful things. And so Elizabeth is like really tries hard to get to know him and kind of break through this. And so this is their story. It is again, a, people die in this book. Like it is sad. People are unhinged in this book, but it is beautifully written and it's really, really good. So, so good. So <laughs> read about Tristan, our grumpy, broken hero who is just suffering so much. Okay, let's get dark now. <laughs> Okay, so my next recommendation is a trilogy. This is, it starts with The Requiem of the Soul. This is by uh, Natasha Knight and A. Zavarelli. So this starts their, um, what do they call it? Their Sovereign Sons series. So both of them have books in this world. So this is a secret society type world. There's there's all these guys that belong to the secret society or all these families. And this is about Ivy and Santiago. So Santiago is our broken hero. He was in an explosion and half of his face was pretty much destroyed. It was burned really badly. Um, and to cover up for that, he actually tattooed over it. So he has like a skull mask on half of his face um, to cover the scars that were on his face. Now, Ivy's family belongs to this group and, of Sovereign Sons and she has thought she's gotten away from it. And her brother comes, they're like lower ranking. Santiago is very high ranking in this family, in this group of his family is very high ranking. And um, she thinks she's gotten away and that she's free of all of that. But one day her brother shows up and is like, nope, you're not. We're taking you back home. You are marrying Santiago. And so she's forced to marry this guy who's really only marrying her for revenge. Her dad is in a coma in the hospital and Santiago hates her father for reasons. And he's marrying Ivy to get back at her father. He wants to ruin Ivy to, for reasons. There's just reasons. You got to read it. It's a great trilogy. It starts up, it sets up this world, the Sovereign Sons world. So it's definitely a little bit darker. So if you want a little bit darker of a hero who has not only his own mental stuff he's got to work through, but he does have the scarring, this is the series for you guys. So my next book is not dark. <laughs> But my hero has been in an accident and it's really messing with him. So my next book is called Fighter's Kiss. It's by Sienna Blake and it's number three in the Irish Kiss series. The whole series is fantastic. Declan is my broken damaged hero. He's been in a car accident, which was his own fault. And he willingly admits that. So I think that's why he beats himself up more about it because it was his fault. And he is, he's a fighter and fighters kiss get it he's a fighter and he is obsessed with getting back his title because when he got in the accident his wife or longtime girlfriend i think she was his longtime girlfriend she left him for his opponent which caused him to do some stupid stuff and get in the car accident so he's desperate to get this title back and he is, that's all he cares about is getting this title back. So he's super focused on that. He's hurting a lot from the pain from different things from the accident. And he can't get along with his assistants. And so he's constantly going through assistance. And River takes this job because she is desperate to leave New York. She's desperate, like for money to to make a new life for herself. So she takes this job. And even though he's a total ass to her, she keeps trying. She like wants to hang on to this because she has nowhere else to go. She loses the job. She literally has nowhere else to go. And I did get a little frustrated with River during the, <laughs> this book a few times, but it's still, it's really great book. So read this. If you want to read about a hero, that's an ass <laughs> that is suffering. <laughs> I like I heroes who are assholes. have redemption. I like my heroes to be assholes once in a while. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All the time, actually. So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm sticking with some dark here, okay? <laughs> so the next book um, is actually, it, it's a series as well. So um, I only have the third book. I don't have the first two. I don't know why I didn't buy the first two. I, for some reason, just ended up with the third. It might not have been available. But the first book, this is um, Jamie Bagley's Road to Salvation trilogy. So there's three books. Obviously, it's a trilogy. This is the third, but the first one is Gavin Song. So this is a spinoff of her last writer series. You can read this as a standalone. 
I do think you get far more enjoyment from the book if you've read the, the Last Writers trilogy or Last Writers series, but there is a lot of books in the Last Writers series. So if that is very intimidating, but you still want to jump into this one, um, you just need to read the first two, which is um, Vipers and Writers books. And then the third or fourth one is Lucky's. I think it's the fourth or fifth. It's later. Then And Lucky's book. Those are the three that you need to read. And they all start with the name of those characters. And then you can jump into this if you wanted to get a little bit of the backstory. Um, but this is about Gavin and Jenny. So the first book, I will say, doesn't have any romance in it. And I thought it would drive me nuts that it doesn't because it's setting up our story. And these books are fairly thick. Um, but I still, I loved it. It was still five stars because it set up everything. So we have Gavin who's a member of the last writers and which is an MC group, uh, MC club, uh, obviously an MC it's an MC, not MC club. Um, anyhow, and, uh, he is a retired Navy seal and he is engaged and he's got all this stuff that the group has all these plans and, um, things are starting to fall in line and then he gets kidnapped and he is held hostage for 10 years. And I want to say held hostage. He's held captive for 10 years and he is abused and he is raped and he is treated horribly during these 10 years and then he is found out they they his family has believed him to be dead during this time um but then he is rescued and this is his story of coming in like coming back out of that and surviving um and meeting someone who is she becomes his salvation so jenny is a foster child. She's also had quite the hard life. I mean, obviously not as hard as his, but she's had a very hard life. And we've met, we meet her in Lucky's book and we see her foster parents were not good people. Uh, it was pretty horrendous things that happened to her, but this is them two healing together. And it was so good. It was so emotional. And it was, you know, when you read Last Writers, Last Writers is kind of a kinky little situation going on. This was like on a whole nother level. And it was, it was fabulous. Jessica, you're going to be mad at me. I'm sorry. But okay. I really liked this book, so I'm going with it anyways. Okay. So my next book is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> hey, we are a judge. Oh, I just kicked my thing. We are a judgment-free zone. People can like what they like, Jessica. Yes, they can. But we invite all kinds really? to our channel. Really? Okay, no, I'm cool. It's cool. I'm just giving Mandy a hard time. Okay, this is actually published in 2014. So this is one of her older books. And so if you like a tortured hero and an emotional story, you will really enjoy this. So our hero is very tortured by his own doings. He feels very broken about things that have happened in his past. But we don't actually, the story is takes place like in dual timelines. So we do flashbacks throughout to kind of find out what is going on in Miles' life that has led him to feel this way. So our hero meets our heroine when he is so drunk that he can't even get into his own apartment. And he's like half drunk, passed out. Well, he's completely drunk, but he's like half passed out in front of her brother's apartment that she is now moving into. So Tate is trying to move in and she can't get in because there's this drunk guy. And it turns out it is Miles, her next, her brother's next door neighbor, who's also going to be her next door neighbor. And he is a pilot with her brother. So her brother and him are good friends. And this starts off their relationship. And they decide to do like a sex only, like a sex, sex ship relationship. I don't know. A sex only relationship. And the rules are no talking about the past and there will not be no future. But she is okay with this at that moment. And then, of course, she starts to develop feelings for him and she wants to try and understand more of why he feels that he's so broken and why is he so tortured about his past. And who is Rachel? Because when she uh, meets him, when he is laying there drunk, he's apologizing to Rachel, but she has no idea who Rachel is. Dun, dun, dun. Done, done. I know you're not a Colleen Hoover fan, but I love this book. It was really good. So if you're looking for a broken, tortured hero without like, if you don't want the dark elements, this is a really great book to read. Okay. Back I need to the dark, dark elements. Yes. Back to dark. Thank you. Okay. So for our last book, I actually have, this is the third book in the Hades Hangman series. You can 
I mean, I guess you could read this as a standalone. Um, there's really only two books before, and the whole series is amazing. So I think to really have like a solid understanding of what's happening, you should read the first two books. But you could read this as a standalone if you wanted to. So this is Souls Unfractured. This is um, Flame and Maddie's book. There's actually two books. Eventually, there's another book down the line. Of Fantastic books. choice. Thank you. <laughs> I know you like this one, too. Um, so Flame was raised by a really cruel man. And he has a lot of scars mentally and physically be because of this. So he feels like there's like there's there's flames in his blood. And as a lot of this has come from what he's been told and how he was raised. And so in order to get the flames out, he's cutting himself all the time. The guy has scars all over his body. And just mentally, there's a lot going on here. Um, he is probably the most tortured, most broken hero I have ever read. But when I tell you this book is good, oh my gosh. Um, and then we have Maddie. So Maddie was raised in the cult with her sister. If you guys have heard us talk about the, this series, you know that these girls come from this cult. So she has been raised in this cult and her sister, they got them out. Now they're living at this MC compound. And she is probably the most broken of all the girls that they've pulled out of there. She was raped at a very young age, repeatedly throughout her life. And so she's very quiet, very dem demure. She really has, um, she's just, she's just really traumatized herself. She has her own things. But when Flame is around Maddie, he feels like the flames are gone. Um, he can't be touched by anybody. But when Maddie touches him, he's at peace. And so this is their story. Flame is extremely messed up, like extremely messed up. And when I first walked into this book, I was like, how is she going to make this work? This guy has so many issues, but she does. It is a beautiful story. Like it's not just good. It is beautiful. It is a wonderful story. So, um, I know it's a very popular story within the series. I think a lot of people have actually read it as a standalone, but again, you need to read the first two because it just sets the stage for this book. And we do see flame throughout both, but so stinking amazing. Did I do flame good? Did you like that? I did. I did. I totally forgot because when I was looking through all my books to figure out which ones I wanted to do, I was just thinking like mainly the, the women are... Yeah that's kind of the focus for the damage part. So yeah. I didn't even think of flame. I just scrolled right on through all those. Yeah, you know, I know I really struggled with the ones that I wanted to choose for this, but cause I really hated to have like a series where you had to read the books before and you really don't with this series, but you should, it's just, it's worth it. It's just, yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. My next book is Love by Bella Aurora. Oh, good Bell pick. Aurora. Sorry. Bella. What? I said good pick. What are you doing? Putting my book away so I don't get it, so it doesn't get bent or anything when we're talking. Oh, it's very distracting. Oh, sorry. Okay, no, um, Bell, that book, Love is a great book. I thought maybe you were trying to grab it off the shelf, so I was like, what is happening? Oh, no, I don't have that one. No. Okay. okay. So my next book is Love by Bell Aurora. This is so good, <laughs> as always, right? As always. So <clears throat> Lev is our broken, damaged hero because he cannot feel processed. Like he doesn't understand what is happening. <laughs> he doesn't understand emotion. He just doesn't process it. And to him, it's a huge deal. But he has a family that greatly loves him and accepts him for who he is. But it still really deeply bothers him. He works at his brother's club that has like a lot of illegal activities, or I guess it's more like their family club. And he's uh, working there when he notices Mina who steals from his brother. And so he follows her to find out what's going on. And Mina, she's homeless. She is like basically like one breadcrumb away from dying from starvation. Like her situation is very dire. So she steals money for food. She's an extremely considerate thief, though she only takes what she absolutely needs right in that moment. So we we can justify what she's doing. And actually, I felt for her, like her situation is pretty dire. And Lev also feels for her, which is weird because he doesn't process emotion, right? 
but he sees something and like he just decides well you can have a job here and a place to stay uh, i'm going to take care of you but he has a lot of secrets and his story is very heartbreaking but this is a story of love and healing and better understanding yourself it was a good go story read go read it yeah go read it yeah all right guys that's what we have for you we these, these were our damaged and broken heroes there yes. were some pretty great reads um if you have a suggestion for our damaged or broken hero definitely put it in the comments below we love us some boys that need extra attention and snuggles and cuddles oh my gosh seriously all right please check back on mondays thursdays and saturdays for new videos from us and we'll see you guys in the next video